and and we are live. Welcome to uh, Blick session number, virtual session number five. Um, we're going to take a look at uh, a few things tonight and try to answer any questions. I'm going to go over how to create uh, closed captioning in YouTube. That'll be the little tutorial that we have tonight, as well as we're going to look at um, module five, any questions in module five, go through module six a little bit more in depth and detail, answer any of those questions, and then take a sneak peek at module seven. We're when, just, when, go ahead, Michelle. When is this course supposed to be done? We are done around, um, we'll take a look at the calendar tonight, but I think it's um, mid to late May. Okay. So about a month left, roughly. But we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at the calendar tonight. Um, and we'll go from there and kind of give everybody a kind of a heads up on where we're at right now. Module 6 just opened up a little late last week. Um, I know that many of you were on spring break. And so um, kind of let that lag a little bit. Uh, I was also on spring break and doing some jumping on some trampolines in Grand Rapids, which was great, fun, except I'm not as young as I thought I was. And then um, um, I was also in Dallas um, uh, at a conference, actually, um, with a company called Edmentum, who runs Study Island and Education City and Reading Eggs and Play-Doh Courseware, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So a little busy week last week. All right, um, let's go ahead and get started. Um, Michelle, any any great things that happened to you during your spring break? Got to see my granddaughter. Hey, that's awesome. And how old is your granddaughter? A year and four months. Okay. She does. She have a tea party. <laughs> tea party is all right. Tea parties for spring break. Woohoo! Hey, there's no uh, no other uh, substitute for tea parties on a spring break with your granddaughter. I'm sure. Who needs Florida or the Caribbean when you've got tea parties with your granddaughter, right? That's right. <laughs> That's right. Exactly right. All right. So, any questions, Michelle? Um, besides, when the class ends, and we can take a look at that real quickly here. I'm behind it. I'm trying to catch up. Um, you're probably not alone. Um, from what I've seen, at least, you're definitely not alone. In fact, I just did a, a ton of grading last Wednesday. Um, and a lot of the grading I was doing was in Module 3 and Module 4. So if you're behind a little bit, um, like Michelle is here, don't fret. Um, we are getting towards the near the end, and as things progress, um, things will get a little bit more intense in terms of your assignments that you have to turn in. So don't get um, too far behind. If you can give you know the class, the course, uh, you know a little bit of uh, dedication every day, and just try to do what you can to you know pick away at it uh, on a daily basis because. To be honest, I think as a instructor, that's what I'm going to have to do as well. Because, like I said, I looked at it on um, Wednesday. I looked at it on Friday a little bit, and then I didn't get a chance to see it until again this morning uh, and take a look this morning. So, I I, I feel I feel the same uh, pain a little bit in terms of trying to make sure we don't get behind. Uh, so, as the instructor, um, I need to pick away at it as well. Anything else, Michelle? Um, just sometimes I have trouble trying to figure out how to do things, but I just kind of muddled through. Okay. I mean, don't don't feel like you can't reach out and send us a message and um, and probably send it to me at this point, um, and then I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can, and, and that as well. Uh, that's why I want to go through the YouTube capturing capture uh, captioning thing tonight because it it is a little techy. Uh, it's not super techy, but at the same time, I can see how some people might get a little confused. So, all right, let's go ahead and take. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen right now. <clears throat> Excuse me with um, 
the blended learning course and let me know if you can see that Michelle. Yeah. All right, great. All right, so I'm just gonna go into the course orientation real quick. Just to kind of go back and look at uh, trying to remember myself where this is. I need to tilt my screen a little bit so I can see it better. It's in the handbook, that's right. It's in the handbook. When we go to the handbook, we can go over to course calendar. It's right there. And in the course calendar, you'll see here is, is the calendar. Okay. <clears throat> so you notice that um, here's April. Module 6 was supposed to, I believe, open on um, last, it, it opened last week. Or wait a minute. Nope, it was supposed to open that um, last April 2nd, and actually it's actually um, not it wasn't open until the ninth. So most of the stuff is going to drop down a little bit okay. by a week or so. Um, you notice that here we are tonight with the uh, virtual five. Um, if we take a look at May, all the coursework needs to be done by the May 15th date. So we're only about a month away. Okay. Okay. So again, if you want to go back to find this, it is in the course calendar under the, um, the course handbook in the very first uh, course orientation module. <clears throat> I think we're just gonna take a look back at module five real quick, uh, making connections. I know that there's some assignments that I need to go through here and um, do some completions on. <laughs> we have Star Wars playing in the background, that's awesome. Everybody wants to talk to me. Yeah, it's all right. I'm a big Star Wars fan, so. I'm, I'm taking an online class right now. Uh, all right, talk to you later. Bye bye. <laughs> Everybody's out of town except for yeah. my daughter. <laughs> that's 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 cool. No problem. So in this uh, in module five, um, creating it's all about creating a, a community of learners online. Um, there's a whole discussion about creating a collaborative community. There's a brainstorming activity about what is community. And then there is designing an online discussion where you had to actually post a question and then some student feedback to that question. There's two things to hand in. Well, actually three things to hand in. Let me scroll down a little farther. Three things to hand in. You had to do a class icebreaker. It didn't have to be, you know, super uh, extensive. It could have been something that like we did at the very beginning of the course when we talked about um, what kind of animal are you. So it didn't have to be something super in depth. Um, your tracking form had to be handed in and you had to do your reflection. Now, when you say tracking form, is that the one where we list week by week or is that Correct. the log? Nope, that's the week by week. Okay. Week by week, week you know, module one, what were you doing this week? Module two, what were you doing that, that tracking form? So it was the, the, the modules and then you kind of gave a, 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 an idea of where you were in terms of your, um, your blend. I think that's the biggest thing. Maybe I should open one of those up real quick. I'm gonna see if I can bring someone's up here. Yeah, there's a couple that need to be graded. Uh, they're Google Docs, I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to. I'm on a different computer tonight. Uh, here's Stevens. I don't think he'd mind. Steven, if you mind, then you know what? Get back to me and I can cut it out of the video or something. But he's, his is a PDF. This is what we're talking about. Just a module one, module two. Can you see that, Michelle? Yep. Okay, so he's, he's just kind of listening here, like resources for support, some Roblox. Um, you know, I think a lot of the people talk about, you know, either timelines and things like that, or it's just, I'm trying to find time to do this, um, actions to move forward. Like what is actually happening? I think the thing is, is people are getting hung up with 
trying to say what they did in that module. Although I want to, I think we want to read that. We also kind of want to know what you're actually doing and how it's going in terms of like actually implementing it. And I think that's the thing that people are trying somewhat forgetting. And so a lot of my feedback to a lot of the participants has been make sure that you're giving us some insight to like actually how it's trying to implement. So you can see like right here in Stevens, he's got a really good example. I'm glad I opened this one up, what I'm trying to implement. So it shouldn't just be about what happened in that module. It should actually be what you're trying to do. Okay. And it should be on each module? It should give us like a little update for each module. Okay. <clears throat> yep. Is it all right to open a, a one module and get stuck and go on to the next module and come back to it? Um, yeah, if you, if you, yep, if that's fine. In fact, um, it might be a good idea to like jump forward to the module that we're currently on. And then, so you kind of are with us and then go back and then pick up the pieces that you missed. Okay. I, I know that people have done that uh, from the past. <clears throat> so you can see that, um, he's got some things about, um, different, trying their various ways to do the higher order thinking skills in his classroom. And that was also part of module four as well. But then he's trying to, um, you know, try to blend that, uh, incorporate into that, into his blend. He's also talking about ice records, which was part of module five that we just looked at and then doing some more with some activities and, and creating some online um, communities in his actual, um, he's actually going to just reading about some more creating online communities. So, He's trying to take what he's doing, he's trying to give us an idea of what he's doing, and then taking it one step further by incorporating some of the things that were happening in that module. So it's pretty good, really pretty good example that, that Stephen has provided tonight. Okay, um, can we use things from the 21 things for teachers and students? Absolutely, if you find something that you're gonna, um, like if it's an action to move forward, or maybe it's a resource for support. Maybe that's 21 things for students or teachers would be a resource for support, or it could be something that you've actually gonna do. And then, you know, you're gonna put that in your actions to move forward. And maybe part of your celebration would be that you actually incorporated some of those things, and then you had to work with some of those things with students. Now, I'm really not tech savvy. Do I, How do I set up a chart like this? Um, I think in the very first module, it seems like you have been turning yours in. Haven't you been turning those in? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I think, think so. I think you have. I think you have. Let's, uh, well, you know what? On the, when we finish the video tonight, let's go back and, and look at that off, okay. off camera. Okay. Because I'm pretty yeah. sure you have been. Okay. Let's make sure this isn't a uh, person trying to get into the course real quick here. All right, nope. <clears throat> okay. Um, so we'll take a look at that, Michelle, before we, we leave tonight, just the two of us. Okay. But the best way to do that would be a Google Doc, honestly, or a Word document. I, you know, it looks like Steven did a PDF, which is great, that works just fine. Um, and then I noticed that Brian had done a Google Doc. So either or, it doesn't matter. Um, a Microsoft Word document works just fine too. I don't have Microsoft Word on okay. this. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. So we'll we'll, work, we'll think about doing a Google Doc then. Okay. Okay. So let's go back to Module Five. We're in it right now. Um, any other questions about Module Five? No, okay. I like the duck. You like the duck, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully you're dancing like that after module five too. <laughs> All right, module six. What about the learner? In module six, um, you're gonna go through and um, you're really gonna take a look at uh, meeting the multiple needs of learners. So. The way I like to think about this module is it's not necessarily a one size meets or one size fits all model. It's a one size fits one model. So it's very individualized, trying to make sure that everybody is having the correct um, learning path for that student. 
So it talks about, um, you know, meeting the needs for all. It talks about making sure that your accessible your materials are accessible to all students, and all students meaning students that could be in your class tomorrow that may have a, a learning disability, or it could be a student that needs, um, they've got a hearing disability and they need the actual words uh, on the on the video that you, you know, produce. So different things like that. Um, it talks about um, establishing an accessible presence in this module. And in this one, this is the one that I know that gets people a little um, anxious. And in this one, there are three parts to it. The first part is that you need to create a video or a screencast to use in your educational setting. So some ideas include, you know, welcoming students to your course. So it could be just a welcome. You can build it now in terms of um, thinking about either a summer school project or um, a welcoming video to your course or your class for next fall. I know we had some people do that before. Um, you could actually introduce them to a new learning a unit or a concept that they haven't seen yet. And so that's the very first little snippet that you're gonna give them. So it would be something almost like this that you could record and then share and record your screen. So actually this is a tool that you actually could use. Zoom.us is a tool that you could use and just share your screen and record your screen and then upload that video um, to YouTube. So it talks about, um, it could be a how-to video, but the length of the video should be about three to five minutes. Okay. Um, and it says, okay. you're, this, is the, this is the big one. These are the two next big ones, I think. Your video needs to be captioned and your video needs to include a transcript. So in terms of a transcript, let me just talk, let me just make sure that we highlight that real quick. All right, so captioned, oops, and transcript. So that's not what I was I wanted to do. All right, so the big thing with the closed captioning is that it's no different than like having closed captioning on your TV screen. So as the video is playing and the, the people are talking in the video, the words are on the bottom, okay? The oh. transcript, it's basically just what, you know, Jerry says this, da, 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 da. Michelle says this, da, 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 da. Okay, so it's basically a script. So instead of thinking about a transcript, think about just the, uh, the script of the video. I think that's a good way to think about it. Um, and then you need to upload your video someplace, someplace like YouTube or Vimeo or a screencast.com, or any other site, honestly, that's acceptable, but it has to be web-based. So we can actually um, have access to that. <clears throat> um, please make sure your video is public, or at least initially viewable. So it has to be kind of public for a while until we grade it, so we can see it. And then if you're uncomfortable with it, you can pull it back down after it's been graded. So you need to share your video by adding it to this glossary activity. So, for example, you could um, you could take it and then put it on YouTube, take your link, your share link from YouTube, and then put it in your glossary. And then after you've posted the video, return to this assignment to view other cohorts' videos and then share your thoughts or ideas regarding their examples. And then you know, just give kind examples or suggestions for improvement if needed. Um, and then later, um, go back to return to your video and read the comments your classmates left about um, you, and then you know ask any clarifying questions. So we added a resource, I think. This is a resource, it's a Google Doc. And it's called Accessible Video Resources. So there's a whole tutorial about closed captions in here. And it's a YouTube video showing you basically how to do closed captions. Not 
Not the greatest video, I'll be honest. Not my favorite. I'll close that one. Um, but there's also some different um, other apps and and, and uh, web tools that they can that they're giving you examples of. Like Snagit is one. Um, Snagit is not totally free, but it's fairly inexpensive. Obviously, YouTube is is inexpensive. It's free. Windows Movie Maker most likely is on your Windows machine if you have a Windows machine. Um, if you have an Apple, um, the iMovie is great. Um, computer, not the iPad version. And then there's some iPad apps you could do with some screencasting with as well. There's a Firefox extension. Um, I've never used that. So I wouldn't, you know, be willing to say it's great, it's great but um, at the same time it may do it. Um, but Snagit is really good. And there's some tutorials from, from TechSmith. TechSmith is a company out of, um, I think it's Okemos, Michigan. And then adding captions to YouTube videos, there's a whole um, piece right here about that too. And there's actually a whole video, the constructor video showing how to caption YouTube videos. So let's go ahead and take a look at that one. you can hear her or not, but what she's talking about is she's using Snagit to go ahead and take a video of her screen. So do a screencast of, on YouTube. And she said that there's not a whole lot of really good tools that you can use in Snagit. You actually have to go a little bit farther in. And, and I would agree that there's not a great a number of tools. Um, but at the same time, I think it is a good way to um, a simple, pretty inexpensive way to go about doing that. In fact, if you've got Chrome, the Chrome ex there's a Snagit extension, which is completely free, which I've used before to create little tutorial videos quickly, and um, it works really, really, really simple. So in this example, <clears throat> if I was over here, um, you notice that I have up here in this corner, Michelle, can you see that where I'm pointing to right here? No. This S. Let's see if I can get a little drawing tool here. Okay, I moved this the screen over, the the visual screen over. Where is it? It's right here. Okay, yeah. Text mess snag it. If I click on that, I have this box that comes open, and down here it says video, and you can actually click on this, and then. Um, take video of your screen that's completely free. It's just a Chrome extension. You can find that in the Chrome um, store. And then once you capture something, what it does is it actually downloads it directly to your, you can either download that video or you can save it directly to your um, Google Drive. So it, it works actually fairly well. I was surprised how well it worked for free. Some of the other things, um, they talked about was um, Windows Movie Maker, how to create captions in there, and then there's some um, Apple's iMovie and iPad apps. But I, like I said, I really like to use Snagit or, or a tool called Camtasia Studio, which is it, it, that one is expensive, so I wouldn't expect everybody to drop what they're doing and go out and buy that right away. Which uh, is the one with for Chrome? Um, I would use Snagit. Yeah, good. Okay. Yep. And, and in this, in our course right here, you notice that under this activity, establishing accessible presence, you've got a Google Doc right here, which has all these different examples. This is the Google Doc, and it goes through everything. Goes okay. through Snagit, goes through some examples. Go ahead, Michelle. I said okay. Oh, okay. So even, can I get this one to open? stuck here. 
Alright, let's see if we can get... I know I did, but probably that's because that's there. There we go. Alright, um, so that's the that's the um, the piece on, on doing closed captions. There's a lot of different activities. If I just come over... I'm having trouble with this real quick. I'm going to stop the share real quick, Michelle. Okay. And I'm going to, we're still recording now. And I'm just going to minimize this for just a second. Oh, I can't minimize it. All right. I'm just going to make it smaller so I can go to my Google. My YouTube account. Let me just show you real quick. I might have something in here that I can do real quick. I don't have any. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a quick tutorial and snag it. I don't know if this is going to work with having multiple things going on at the same time, but we're going to try. All right, so the video should be a maximum of three to five minutes on length. Your video needs to be captioned. You need to include a transcript. All right, I'm gonna come back and share my screen with you, Michelle. All right, so can you see, um, where it says name your video right here, Michelle? Yes. Okay, great. So I just created, a, that's how quickly it, it took. I created a little video of the, the course using that Snagit extension. So um, I'm just gonna say this is a demo. Oops. If I could type it, it'd be better. Demo. And now I've created it. And down here, there's this three little buttons. Now, if I click on those three little buttons, I have a number of different things I can do. I can save the Google Drive link. I can send it strictly to YouTube, which is in this case, that's exactly what we want to do. We want our videos on YouTube or an animated GIF, which we're not going to do at this point. So we would just go ahead and click on send to YouTube and then go from there. So if I just play my video here, All right, so that was a, just a really fast video of my screen, but um, at the same time, it's nice that I can use something that's a free tool and I can send that directly to YouTube. Once I get it to YouTube, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that real quick. It asked me what the, the title is. I'm just gonna say dem demo, and I'm gonna create on public because in the direction said, I had to create it as a public shared document. I'm gonna go ahead and share that. You can see that it's, this doesn't take very long. It was a very short video. And your video that you do, it's gonna be three to five minutes. It's gonna take a little bit longer than that. And you notice down here, there was a little um, pop-up that said the URL had been copied to my um, clipboard. So then I would just go back in. My URL has already been copied. And then I could go ahead and add my new entry. The biggest thing is, before you do that though, make sure you go back to your YouTube channel and go back to your videos and look at your uploads. So I'm gonna go to my YouTube channel, I'm gonna go to Video Manager, or I can go to Videos, either way. I'm gonna go to Video Manager here. And you'll notice that it's loading my demo. Now I have a, a, a video on YouTube. From here, I'm gonna to go to edit. And I'm gonna to go to advanced settings. When I go to advanced settings, um, what I usually would do here is I'm gonna say, I'm gonna take video language, English, I can do the recording date is today. 
Um, caption certifi certification. Here we go. Captions. The content has never aired on television in the U.S. And the content has never aired on television in the U.S. without captions. Well, we're good to go. All right. Standard YouTube license usually is fine. Um, I usually don't allow comments on my videos. Um, and you just give your ratings for this video. Yeah, it doesn't really matter, to be honest, to me. Um, I'm all embedding, and if anybody is subscribing to me, yes, they can go ahead and um, get notified. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and say save. All right, I'm going to come back into basic info. And we should be good to go. Once my video has completely loaded, I can do more actions here. And why don't I see what I'm trying to see? I'm going to have to come back to that at a later time, Michelle. Okay. All right. So I'll go ahead and post the rest of that uh, tutorial um, afterwards to make sure that everybody can understand to see how to do that, plus to, to do the, the captioning and the transcript. To save a little time right now, I'm going to go ahead and jump to Module 7, Assessment. In module seven assessment, you have um, a whole assessment overview. So it talks about the types of types of, uh, excuse me, the types of assessment. So it's gonna talk about formative and summative assessments and the difference between those two. Um, then you're gonna go down and when you get finished with that, you're gonna go to online assessment strengths. Give some reasons why some things would be better online. So you have to do two separate entries. Uh, on two sh two assessment standards, which you feel would be your strength online. So look back at GH and I, and then two separate entries again in order to two assessment standards. That would be your strength. And then you can do the in-person as well. So you've got the online assessment strengths and you've got the in-person assessment strengths. Okay. Same thing for this one, two separate entries, two assessment standards which you feel would be your strength in your face-to-face -face classroom. After that, you've got a whole piece on formative assessment to read through. You've got a discussion forum uh, regarding formative assessment and Web 2.0 tools. So this one is one answer for the activity to be marked complete. And the big thing right here is that, you know, that forum rubric in the handbook to make sure you're doing that. Um, there's a whole section on about giving feedback in your course and feedback points to ponder is a hand in assignment and talks about um, timeliness, which you probably could do a better job at and um, concise messages and consistency of messages and being, you know, making sure you have proper communication in your course. A uh, couple of things, uh, the summative assessment piece, um, after you've gone through the feedback and the feedback in the, in the blended environment, uh, there's, there's a summative assessment piece you'll read through. There's a whole section on SBAC practice and training tests. And if you've started the M step like the rest of us have in the state of Michigan, then that discussion should be lively. Um, the next one is activity, designing a comprehensive assessment plan. So in this one, there are three parts to that. Um, because this it says, this is a longer activity over time, I suggest you type it up into a Google Doc or a word processing document and submit it by using the URL or uploading the document. So number one is provide a detailed overview of the unit. So you have to kind of go through a comprehensive assessment plan for, um, for a relevant unit in your blended learning environment using at least one of the Web 2.0 tools you recently learned about. So you're gonna learn about some tools. So 
a, a detailed overview of the unit, and then identify at least three formative assessments you incorporate into the unit, and then design a summative assessment rubric. Um, the rubric must have at least three levels and must have three or more criteria to evaluate. And there's, they're actually, they do a nice job giving you a, a sample assessment plan. So as you can see, this is a little lengthy. You know, it's not super long, but at the same time, um, it is, um, there's the rubric that you need to create. And then you've got, here's your formative assessment. And one of the, the uh, activities, the Web 2.0 tools they use is Vokey, which you'll learn about. Um, there's another one called about using VoiceThread. And then there's some feedback sections. And then there's the Sonto project. And there you can see that they're using the, the Web 2.0 Web tool, uh, VoiceThread, for this example. All right, Michelle, anything that's uh, jumping out at you? I don't think so. All right. I'm going to pop back open here. All right. What we're going to take a look at next um, is about it. Uh, Michelle, if there's any other questions that you have, I think we're done tonight. Okay. I just kind of overwhelmed. Yeah, there's a lot to lot to take in these next couple uh, modules. So, you know, I'm sure that you're not alone and uh, make sure that you reach out um, for help. Don't get stuck. You know, if, you, if you're stuck on something for like, you know, more than 20 minutes, uh, ask. Okay. Okay? All right. I'm going to stop the recording tonight. Um, I will be posting this up soon and I will also follow up with that captioning video as well. Okay. All right. Have a good night. You too. All right. Thanks. Bye.